Hey, what's up guys? I'm Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. I do all the leak code and hacker rank solutions. I uh, have playlists for both of them, so check those out. I just do all the problems. So This one's called Spiral Matrix. I uh, wonder if any of you guys have heard of it before. It's a medium problem. I'm trying to do some more medium ones. Given a matrix of n by n elements, meaning rows by columns, uh, return all elements of the matrix in spiral order. And this is really popular, uh, a traversal through a 2D array. Um, this is something you need to know. Um, this is something I've been trying, I've wanted to know for a while. Um, it's not even that hard. It's just like when I first saw it, I was intimidated. But it's basically um, doing a traversal where you would, you know, print. So you would, let's start at 0, 0, for example. We would go, you know, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 8, 7, 4, you know, and then you'd move inwards. The spiral moves inwards, obviously. So um, how do we do this? Well, just indices, basically. You just loop through and you just use indices. I was kind of like, um, at first I was like, oh my god, this looks hard, dude. Spiral traversal. But really, you're just going from the beginning column to the end column, from the beginning row to the end row, from the end column to the beginning column, then from the um, beginning row, the end row to the beginning row. And what we're going to do to actually accomplish this is we're going to have boundaries. We're going to kind of have pointer, we're going to have counters that are keeping track of the, you know, beginning row in the ending row and the beginning column and the ending column. And as we traverse, we're going to traverse this whole row at first, right? One, two, three. Then we're going to move the boundary for the beginning row up one to this row now because we've already traversed this row we're never going to do it again so we just keep moving that boundary the end column will move inwards the beginning column will move inwards this is a smaller example but you know maybe if we could find a bigger even this one's bad you know we, we would traverse down here and then we'd move the column end here and then we would you know so we move these boundaries and uh, let's just implement it and you'll see as we go so we actually what we have to do given a um, m by n um elements uh, return them in spiral order so we actually have to store these in a new list of integers um, you can call it whatever you want the I read I saw the solution so I'm just gonna use that one it's called res uh, not his solution I saw one in the discussion that was pretty good um, so if matrix dot length is equal to zero uh, we'll just return that right we're gonna return nothing the matrix length zero we're just gonna return we didn't traverse anything so we'll just return zero um, then we're gonna have we're gonna have our boundaries I was talking about right so the beginning row is gonna be set to zero the ending row is gonna be set to the length of rows uh, minus one because we're gonna be using indices so matrix dot length minus one right that's the number of rows except minus one for the indices like I'm saying uh, beginning column is going to be zero end column column end is going to be matrix of zero dot length this is pretty standard if you know about 2d arrays you should be able to understand this it's just you know these are going to be our boundaries um, and then we'll have our main loop is going to be well begin row row begin is less than or equal to row end and column begin is less than or equal to column end. Uh, if you don't know about, if you're getting confused already, I'd recommend go checking out just uh, 2D arrays in general, looping through them using two for loops or something like that first. Okay, uh, but if you're not, if you are paying attention now, this is going to be probably the most important part in how we're organizing this, right? So this is probably my favorite organization I've seen out of all of these solutions so far. We have these boundaries, and then what we're going to do is first, we're, we, we're starting at 0, 0, right? That's our coordinate that we're going to start at, and we're going to move right, right? And then we're going to move down, and then we're going to move left, and then we're going to move up. So if we're moving right, we're going to just have a bunch of... Four, and these are just for loops. So we're going to have four for loops that consistently move within these boundaries, right? So we're going to have... Um, I is set to row begin, uh, column begin, right? Because we're going columns, right? We're going one, two, three. We're, 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 we're traversing the first row, but what we're actually doing is accessing column indices, right? Because these are column values. Okay. So we're going to be going from the column value indice 0 to the ending column value uh, indice of 2, 0, 1, 2. Uh, so we're going from column begin to column end. 
less than or equal to because we accounted for the indices up there, um, right? And then what we're going to do is as we traverse, we're going to add it to our output array, which is res. So add matrix of, and right now what we're doing is we're only, we're only traversing the first row, right? So we're going to be traversing row begin. And then what we're changing is the column indices. So I is going to be in the indice, you know, I is taking place of the column. And when we traverse the whole first row, this is where it's a little switch. You have to kind of adjust your mind to this is you go, you iterate down this whole, this whole row. So what we're going to do is move the row begin boundary. We're going to increment it because we've already done everything on that first row. We don't need it anymore. We're going to move our boundary upwards. I was explaining that earlier. Second loop. And then we're going to, you know, give, uh, we're going from row begin because we're starting at here. We're starting at the end of column boundary and going from the beginning row boundary to the end row boundary. Okay, so for, uh, while row is begin, uh, while i is less than or equal to row end, um, i plus plus. So we're looping there, and then we're going to do res dot add matrix of i is in the row we're because we're changing row positions now right row indices now and the column is going to be the ending column value right the ending column boundary because we're at the very ending column boundary right now and now that we've iterated through all of the ending boundary of the column boundary we can decrement it so column end subtract one this is gone so no more are we going to be looping through this or this all we have left is this little square here. And this is now the last column boundary. And then this is the beginning row boundary. This is the ending row boundary, et cetera. It would be better if we had, you know, this isn't much better for an example to explain. But now here's something else that you have to consider, guys, is now that we've changed these values and our loop relies on row begin being less than or equal to row end and column begin being less than or equal to column end, we have to keep we have to do checks because we did change these values so we don't want to mess up in our last two for loops so while row begin is less than or equal to row end we have to do a check now then we can do our our second two loops so this time we're going to be going right we went right we went down and now we want to go left we're going to be going from the ending column boundary so column end well, i is greater than or equal to column begin because we're going from the ending column to the beginning column, i minus minus. And we have to decrement, right? Because we're at a higher value than the value we want to get to. Um, then what we're going to do, res.add matrix of row end because we're in the final row boundary now. We're at the ending row boundary, row end. So that's all of the row values and then i is going to be the column index right and then after this well what are we going to do we have now gone through the whole bottom row so we can push back back on that um row end boundary right row end can be decremented we've already iterated through this whole last row we can move up and row end is now in the middle here and then we have to do the check once again um while column begin I mean if column begin is less than or equal to column end then we're going to loop through into i is equal to we're going up now so i is going to be equal to row end because we're at the ending row and we want to get up to the beginning row um i is equal to row end I, well i is great for uh i greater than or equal to row begin um i plus no, I minus minus, right? We're decrementing because we're at a, a higher value than the one we want to get to. We're at a higher row than the one we want to get to. We want to get back up. Um, we're going to do res.add matrix of this time it is I in the row value. Whatever, wh whatever your I is set to. So if it's I set to row, then you put I in the rows index. And then this is going to be, we're at the beginning column, right? This is the beginning column. This is the ending column. So we're at the beginning column. So we're going to use column begin. And we just iterated through all of the beginning column. So what we're going to do is we're going to do column begin plus plus. Move that boundary forward. So as you can see, we're looping around in a spiral and then moving these boundaries inward. So on a bigger square, it would be easier to demonstrate here. But um, the boundaries keep moving inward until we iterate through all of the elements 
Um, and we will, every time we're adding them into this list of integers, and then right at the end, all we have to do is return this list of integers. Hopefully this works, because I have been having a little bit of trouble here. There we go. First try. There we go, first try. Runtime, one millisecond. Um, as you can see, I had a little bit of trouble when I was practicing. Um, so yeah, this is really good. We have to be aware of these if statements. I guess that's really important. And the boundaries, once you get this concept, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, it wasn't that bad. It does look kind of like a lot of code at first, but it's really not that bad. And I think it's pretty cool. It's actually like a fun problem. Um, also, highly recommend these like chocolate almond things, dude. It's like cocoa powdered almonds. Super good. I'm loving them. Um, this is a long video, but you know. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you like this one. I'm going to try and do some more medium ones. I know I've been slacking and putting some easy ones, but I've had a lot of technical interviews lately, so sorry about that. And this is preparing me, dude. I'm telling you, it's uh, for sure. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Please check out my other videos, and thank you guys for watching. See ya.